Aromatime Bistro presents Wine Time Live, hosted by the Hudson Valley's premier green certified entrepreneurs, Marcus and Jamie Giuliano. So grab a glass of your favorite vino, sit back, relax, and travel with them, sharing their passion discovering unique vineyards, outstanding wines, delicious food, and great adventure. Hello, Facebook Live. Hello, Instagram. Hello, everybody. It's Jamie and Marcus here. Wine Time Live, episode number seven. Wow. All I right. was the first American to cook here. We're going to talk about that. Awesome. And we're going to talk about uh, wine from one of our favorite producers, an iconic producer in Verona in Italy, Negrar specifically. Uh, home of Amarone, and who are we talking about, Jamie? We are going to be tasting Tenuta Santa Maria. So, um, it's, is it considered the Bertani estate, or? A oh, great question. Right. Great so question. The, talk a little bit about um, the differences between the Bertanis, because there there is a Bertani wine, right? Bert right. And then there's the Tenuta Santa Maria, which is. Bertani. Bertani as well. Right. So talk about the But not allowed to really say Bertani. You talk about that. Okay. Right. You're not right. They're not allowed to Great. say Bertani. So we are good friends with Giovanni. Yes. Bertani. So, yes. So I just had a message with yesterday. Yes. Harvest this year is fantastic, he awesome. said. Uh, business is slow because of COVID, but uh, the harvest is fantastic. And we're going to do a virtual event with him here. We've been to the vineyard a couple times. We've taken a group of Twice. people to, to the vineyard. Um, so... Let's talk about Bertani. Yeah. So Bertani is the iconic Amarone producer right. from Valpolicella, uh, from, from, from Negrar, from, from that area, from Verona. All right, they make amazing world-class Amarones. Uh, some of the most famous Amarones ever made come, come out of the Tunita Santa Maria home. Yes. All right, so. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, it smells delicious. Ugh. Sorry, so, I want to take you off. Here. That's okay. So, they've been making wine, I think, for six generations or eight generations. It's like the mid-1800s. We asked Giovanni what his favorite vintage is. And he goes, 1923. And then somebody in our group asked him, well, how many bottles do you have of this left? And what they say? 2,000 bottles? Like, of the 1923, 1923 vintage. So and when we were there, he gave us an amazing tour. Oh. And we were in a cellar. And... and um, it was, it was amazing. I it mean, was amazing. his family is amazing. Yeah. So. so now, in 2006, two of the sisters decide that they don't want to be in the wine business anymore. And what they do is they, um, and Gaetano, who's this, the, 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 the brother. The brother. That's right, the brother. He, this is, this is, his, this is his love. This is his, you know, his life. So they come to an agreement to split the winery up. The two sisters sell their share. When they sell their share, they sold off the Bertani name. So after 2006, on the front of a bottle of wine, if you see, you won't see Bertani on here except in small letters on the bottom. It says Gaetano Bertani property. Um, so the Bertani name is on here, but in small letters. They're not allowed by the agreement to print Bertani over a certain type print on the bottle. The Bertani after 2006 that you buy in the store that says Bertani in big letters, big letters right? it's basically an investment bank. It's an insurance company, whatever it is. It's, it's an investment group that got together, bought the Bertani name, and Tenuta Santa Maria is the beautiful- the property, right? The beautiful home. It's gorgeous. Yeah, do you wanna go grab a picture on the wall? Sure. If you're, if you're watching us, um, so we have, find it. we have um, 105. We have a picture that I took of Tenuta Santa Maria uh, when we were there the first time, I believe. So this picture, this is, this picture is, um, or this estate is, uh, this is it right there, look at that. Um, if you can see it on the screen now. That is Tenuta Santa Maria. It looks like a, a castle. It is amazing. This is in Negrar, uh, up, in, up in the Verona area, uh, well, right outside of Bartolino, east uh, side of uh, Lake Garda. So in this agreement in 2006, the label, the label Bertani, the name Bertani, gets sold off with everything outside the walls of Tunita Santa Maria. Tunita Santa Maria is, is closed off with stone walls. Right. So the stone walls that inside the property stay in touch, stay in, intact with Gaetano and his, his two sons. 
uh, Giovanni, who we're good friends with, and um, they are making wines that Bertani has always made in the same estate, same vines, but they're not legally allowed to put Bertani over that small typeset in the bottom. So it says Gaetano, Gaetano Bertani Negrar Verona is what it says on there. So this indeed, folks, is the original Bertani. This is where it's coming from. Um, they make 600,000 bottles a year of wine. They make a Chardonnay, a Suave, a Merlot. Some of the stuff is coming from the eastern side of Verona where they make Suave, coming from Suave. Um, they have a little property there that makes some wine uh, that has vines. And their main vines are, when you pull up to Tunis Santa Maria, it's all around. They're be it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. And when we were there last time, didn't we go on a, didn't uh, Giovanni take us up um, the first time we were first there. Time, the first time. First we were time there. we were there, he took us up. Um, they were ripping out a bunch of vines because they just they had were to replanting. Replanting. Some. It, was, was, it was so old. It was right? time. It was, it was time, time. Yeah. for them to get replanted. Um, they make a Merlot out of this property. Um, they make a, another wine which we're not familiar with because the importer really doesn't have it. Um, but we, the first time we ever met Giovanni Bertani was here at the restaurant. He he came in to. Um, to sell, so, wine, sell, right? sell wine, yeah. To sell wine, uh, he, the importer, the original importer, brought him in, mm -hmm. and uh, Gary, and they had come in several times. Every time Giovanni was here, they would come in. Giovanni ended up loving Aroma Time. Mm -hmm. uh, has had several meals here. Ends up loving it, and um, invites me to cook at Tenuta Santa Maria. So on one of our wine tours, uh, uh, yeah, invites us to cook there. Said so Marcus. Come cook. It's not set up yet. We're not set up to do this yet, but we're going to be set up and we're building, you know, villas, a, a hotel there. Now, meantime, um, you're like planning everything from the States to go right. over there to actually the cook first, the in their kitchen, right? The first time he told, told me, he invited me to come cook was, it must have been like 2010, 2011. We didn't take our group there until 2017. Right. So all in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, if someday... I'm gonna cook at the Britannia estate. Yep. Someday I'm gonna cook at the famed Britannia estate. Is I'm gonna say, as a chef, that's an honor. Absolutely. It's an extreme honor to cook there. Um, so we plan our trip to that area. Of course we plan it, could go see. And- um, He was high on our list. He was a, <laughs> we have to go see, we have must. to, must go there. If, folks, if you go to Verona, let us know. Um, we'll uh, message them over there and, and get your tour in over there, it, uh, tasting and tour, it is amazing. So. Now time's coming up to the time that we're going to be leaving and, and, and I'd be cooking there. Well, come to find out. I think I said, do, we need, do you need to bring anything? Do you need to bring right? knives? Do you need so, to bring knives? What do you need to bring with you? So it turns out that they do cook there in the, in this, in the state there. However, it's caterers that come in. Like so they, they bring in all of their own. They, they had the Ferrari club there that year. They did one of the prince's weddings there. Um, so they do, they do some catering things. But they don't cater. They don't cook themselves. They a company comes in and caters. So right. they come into the kitchen. They stage their trailer or whatever, and they, they bring cook. everything with them. Right. and They take everything back with them. <laughs> so Giovanni goes, "I don't have anything here to cook with, Marcus. You're literally the first American to come cook in this kitchen here. <laughs> um, so we don't have pots, pans. We don't have any of that. So he's messaging me on WhatsApp." Right. And <laughs> what do you need? What do you need? What do I, need to I get found you? this on Amazon. Will this work? Will this pan work? Right. Will this <laughs> tell me? What? So he ordered pots, pans, cutting boards, everything for us that we needed to cook. It was pretty cool. It was really, it was really cool. cool. It was really cool. It was really cool. Um, his parents, who are in their late eighties, they were there at dinner with us. They were at dinner with us. Actually, the father was still in the field, right? Um, uh, he was Gaetano. At Gaetano. He was in the field. Um, checking on the vines and then he showed up for dinner after and and his mom uh, was in the kitchen with you a little bit she was um, laughing and um, and, and saying she's a sweetheart. why didn't you make risotto <laughs> <laughs> yes she she heckled me for not making risotto yes. I made polenta I think you were afraid to make risotto in Italy for them I next time oh, I will no, next time. <laughs> <laughs> so she heckled me about polenta yes and she goes next time you come you and I are going to make risotto. Risotto together, yes. So I was like, wow. So, so we, we took our guests to um, their estate, the Tenuta Santa Maria estate, and you cooked there. 
Um, and then we fed everybody there. So it was really fun. Years before that, um, Giovanni took us to, um, to a, a really awesome cheese uh, maker, right? A, a cheese maker. Cheese, 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 uh, cheese, uh, a cheese store? Make was it a cheese store? A cave. It was a cave. It, it was cheese, really awesome. Cheese shop that has cheese a cave. A cheese shop that has a cave in it. And it was really cool and we loved it. And we, we decided that we were going to go back to that uh, cheese cave store. Uh, market and we were gonna buy a lot of the ingredients that we were going to use in your dishes and what we were presenting at the um, at Tenuta Santa Maria with Giovanni when we were cooking that night so yes. it was kind of fun to kind of piece that all together because that was the exciting part for us the exciting part was wow Giovanni took us here now we're gonna bring all of that to our guests who, who are traveling with us and we're gonna cook dinner for them and it was really it was really fun it kind of brought it almost like a full circle for us. Okay. Um, and then our, our guests who were traveling with us were in the kitchen helping you cook, and it was really fun. It was, it was a lot really of fun, yes, fun people night. came and helped me cook, they yep. did. So that was a really fun night. The one thing we're gonna change about our next trip to that area is we're gonna set time aside to take all of our guests to the cheese shop. Absolutely. And what is the other product they have there mm. that we fell in love with? You can't, the, the mustard. The mustards. Italian mustards or mostadas are. Mostada, yeah. You want to grab them? We have. They're we have. not like it's mustard not, it's not from mustard. the states. Not like it's not like it's not like, it's not a like yeah. Dijon or not like any of these type of, mus uh, of mustards. It is basically a fruit jam. It's a fruit jam that is um, that is flavored or finished with mustard seed oil. Now mustard seed oil can get extremely spicy. I brought the one that so you can open it. Mm -hmm. So um, we have them in stock right now. We have one in stock right now. And um, if you're looking on screen for us, this is what it is, mostada. Uh, that is, um, and this is this is a chipotle. Oh, it smells so good. This is a you grilled onion. It's inside, it's it's, it's uh, jammy. Jammy. You can smell it. So, it is basically a fruit jam or a vegetable jam that is in has mustard seed oil in it. Now, mustard seed oil is super strong and powerful. Thus, you make mustard gas out of it, which you use for warfare. You're not allowed to bring these fruit jam mustards into the US. You're not allowed to bring them on planes. You cannot, you can't find them that, that much in Italy. You cannot find them in duty free. You will not find them in, in, you won't. The first time that Giovanni took us said, mustard, mustard, we're gonna go to a mustard shop. <laughs> and we're looking at all these buckets behind the counter. I'm on, like, on that's the, not mustard. I'm like, mustard, what's he talking about mustard? And it was like, this, this is jam. This is like strawberry jam right, or whatever. Right. It's like mustards or mustards. And it says mustard on it. And I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> and after we explained properly it. what was in there, the mustard seed oil um, is what makes this stuff. It was kick. really, really good. Like, really good. Oh, like, uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Like, one of our favorites. And we couldn't wait to get our hands on it and, and to have some here. So, um, so if you want to taste it, come on in and get some. It's really Yep, we awesome. sell these now. Uh, we sell these now. We're going to get another one in, too. I found another one. Uh, from another one of our distributors that oh, has. Fun. But they said they're finished with mustard seed oil. This is not as strong as the one that was in Italy. The ones in Italy, get some of them get super, super powerful and strong, and it, they make a really good flavor combination profile. The sweet jamminess, the hot spiciness, mm -hmm. really, really, really good. Amazing. Um, so. so, yeah, so uh, next trip. So the next trip we do to the northern Italy, you and I were talking about this today, the last trip we did, we started in Milan, drove down to La Mora, did Barbaresco, Alba, then drove down to Gavi, and then up past Milan again, and over to Lake Garda, into Valpocella, Negrar, Verona. It was, it's too much spread apart. And then the, everybody, they left us, and they went back to Milan, and we stayed over in that area, and we went south, right? Because we stayed after the trip, and we went, right, north. Yeah. Oh, we went north. We went north. We went north, we went north. And then we ended up eventually going south. south. But we went north. Um, we have to break those trips in the north to two separate trips. Yeah, they're gonna have to be northeast they have to and be, northwest. They have to be northeast and northwest. Because when you go into La Mora, uh, into Barolo, the commune of Barolo wow. and Barbaresco, and, uh, which is Alba, Torino, there's so much stuff to do there that we totally missed. There's a brewery that we wanna visit, uh, Lover Beer. There's a bunch of, there's so many things, the truffle hunt that we did. There's so many more things to see up in that area that it's hard for us to, to, to go across almost three hours of travel time. And we did it one day. 
but now we're now we're smart enough to know, hey, okay, we fly into Verona for the eastern part of the trip, we fly into Milan for the western part of the trip. They're two separate trips. I even put it on paper and I'm like, do we stay an extra three days? No, that's you twelve days. It out into two trips. Two trips. See, I have to make the decision sometimes. We we talked about <laughs> <I'm> it. Just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> and uh, that would those are the two yes, choices. Yes. So on the VIP website, by next week you'll see those that Northern Italy trip broken into two because I'm that's the page I was working on today, and I'm like, there's just way too much to do, and if you find the Verona, all the Suave vineyards, all the all the the, the Amarone vineyards that we missed. Like Corta Saint Aldo, oh Marinella, amazing wineries in in all of that area. I mean, and in all areas, there's a lot. So you're trying to put too much into one trip, and and I'd rather concentrate it into two separate areas. And we're so close to Venice. I think we should do a day. In we're Venice. an hour to Venice. We're an hour to Venice, yeah. and we didn't get to Venice last time with our group. We've been to Venice, but our group we couldn't because it just the time we permitted. We haven't been to Venice in a long time since 1997. Seven. So it's it's time for us to go to Venice, experience it again, and uh, enjoy Venice. So Rick, let's talk about the wine. Awesome! This wine is incredible, uh, Valpicella Ripasso. Um, it's Rondinella it's, Corvina. It's delicious. Um, is that what it is, Rondinella and Corvina? Corvina, probably. Okay. Um, and uh, it is super concentrated, um, super raisiny. Um, I mean, when you put it up to your nose, you are just like, wow, um, absolutely incredible. Um, it's got a lot of deep fruit concentrations mm -hmm. in here, really deep cherries. It's not sweet, but it's, it's concentrated, and the richness comes out in, in, in this wine. So the reason why Rapasas yeah, the, the, are and Amarones are, so Amarone um, was never quite the style that they make it now. I think it was a bitter dessert wine or something. It was, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't, it was a bitter. It wasn't what it, what we know as Amarones are now. Um, they started making these by taking the grapes and putting them in the attics. Drying rooms. Drying right? rooms in the attics. Now the harvest is now. Giovanni goes to harvest is now and it's a good harvest or harvesting this week. So the grapes go upstairs into these attics with ventilation. Open the windows, close the windows, open the windows, close the windows. Some of the wineries now are so dialed in with electronics um, and automation. It, it's almost like it it feels like the windows are open. Like well, it's they, just, they're, they're simulating. It's climate the, controlled. Like they're it's climate controlled. Yeah. You need to dry the grapes. So they dry the, partially dry but the grapes. slowly dry the grapes, right? Right, they don't press, they don't press until January, February. Right. So the grapes are picked now. So when we're there in November, you get to see this room, and it's incredible the it way is. that they're drying these grapes. And and you can see some of the grapes are super raisiny, and some are not yet. And it's like a bunch right here is, and a bunch right here isn't. It's really incredible. Some are big, some are small, some are raisins, some are not. It's really incredible. So what they do is they raisinate the grapes. The, the grapes. They still have liquid in them. They juice them, press them which not as much juice comes out, which is why the wine's more expensive because they lose a lot in evaporation, but the wine is much more concentrated. Amarones that are on our list right now are $150 and up, um, $180, $200. Amarones are just, it's like that. Our daughter's birthday's this, this. I know. You were talking about opening a bottle of Amarone. Because she, she loves Amarone. She does like Amarone. She's been to the vineyard and she loves Amarone. And so she turns 21 um, in, uh, gosh, uh, two and a half weeks. Two and a half so. weeks. Um, so she will be able to, um, you know, enjoy, and not that she hasn't had a glass here and there, but she will be able to enjoy um, a nice bottle of wine. And, and you were like, I'm going to open an Amarone because she loves Amarone. She so, discovered she loved Amarone when she was 16 when, years when old. 16 and we were in Italy and we <laughs> went to, to, to Santa Maria. And other Amarone yes. vineyards. She's like, I really like this, this, this wine. This is really good wine. It'd be interesting to see her taste it again now. Because yeah. I don't think she's had it since we've been in, we were in Italy and that was 20, that was six year, uh, five years, five, well, five. Be six, yeah, five, five, years years ago. Ago, five years ago, yeah. So um, they press the grapes, they juice them, they um, make wine from this. Now with the pressings, the pressings that they have are full of flavor still. So what they do is they take their, their, their wine, their other wines, and they pass it through this, called repasso, repassing. So they pass it through the crush, the press, the crushings, and this make, this fortifies this Valpolicella, this regular Valpolicella, uh, Rapasa, and it fortifies it, Rapasa or fortifies it, and brings out some of the Amorona characteristics in this wine. And these wines aren't cheap either. Um, 
this I think is like eighty dollars on our list, but amazing stuff. Um, Rapasas, Amarones, they go up in price range. That, that, that that's just the nature of, of how they make the wines and the and, and the end product. So, um, Tenuta Santa Maria uh, from Negrar from Verona, uh, definitely a must. If you've never been to Verona. Verona is an amazing cool. city. It's really cool. We've been there two or three times, and we love, love it. it. The marble sidewalks, mm -hmm. the shopping, the streets. Um, just an amazing, amazing city. It's actually, I, I mean, I, I we like Rome, but it's an upscale Rome. It, you know, the, it, it's, it's much smaller. Smaller, but, but uh, right. Yeah, it's, it's all, like, it's all. Yeah, it's closer. It's tighter knit. It's it's classy. Um, marble streets. The Colosseum. Is older, in Verona, is older, older than the Roman yeah. Colosseum, and we've stayed right outside the Colosseum. Yeah, like really you walk cool. there, you open up your door, and you walk out, and the Colosseum is right, right there. there, which is really cool. The restaurants are amazing. Uh, we go to the one restaurant, the wine restaurant that has three thousand wines in their list, Bottega Vini. Bottega Vini. Yeah. Um, amazing. They used to have a New York location, which I believe is since closed. The original location is in Verona. I think it's the largest wine list in Italy. And our friend Costanza knows the owner, and yes. she lives there, and so we go with her. It's amazing when we go. all the the contacts that we've made over the many years, you know, and that we can just pick up the phone and say, "Hey, you know, we're coming to Italy," or we send a text or a message, and really cool, you know. It's, it's fantastic. It's really fantastic, and that's that's what we're all about. It's building relationships um, when we're here, when we're there, and bringing our guests with us, you know, on these VIP winery vacation tours, and. Uh, you know, bringing them with us and letting them experience what we experience. Exactly. So, you know. The first time we went to Bottega Vini, do you remember how late it was at night? Oh, yeah. We went in for um, just for a glass of wine. We were in right? Tuscany. We got done yeah. with Altasino, and we messaged Costanza and said, we might be there tomorrow. We're not sure. Oh, that's right. I drank a double espresso. That's We got right. on the road. We stopped in Florence. And we stopped in Florence, got a bite. Got a bite, of, yep. And I kept driving. Yep. And we got to Verona. Verona at 10 p.m. at night. We check into the, the air, I think we were staying in an Airbnb. Air, uh, for when it was us, it was yes. Airbnb, yep. We were with the, kids, with the kids. And we said, okay, let's go get something to eat. So we walked to meet Costanza um, at Bottega Vini. 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 Yeah. And um, we sat and we were told what we had to have, right? We were told mm -hmm. we had to have the Amarone risotto, right? She was hosting. So Costanza. Oh, yeah, she was hosting. Costanza um, is a wine broker. So she represents wines uh, from Champagne, from Burgundy, and a lot from Italy. So she was there that night doing a champagne dinner. So we jumped right into the champagnes. Yeah. Like we got there and, and here the flights of champagnes, right yeah. uh, order the Amarone risotto, order this, order that. And then um, the wine captain came over and I said, listen, I want you just to wow me with something that I will never have again something so small, something boutique-y, we'll spend up to a 100 euro a bottle or whatever. And he came under like at 75 euro a bottle of something that was right from that area. One I don't even remember, I don't what, remember it what it was. Yeah, we probably was have pictures. Really cool. yeah. And that's the experience that we were looking for. Um, but then our second time there uh, with our group, Costanza actually joined us again mm -hmm. um, because she knows the general manager. And of course they sent out um, an extra course for us. Yes. They comped this extra course. Took us to the wine cellar, mm -hmm. which is mind blowing wine cellar. It's unbelievable. They have dressers, right? Dressers that have drawers that are pulled out, yep. and right? And all these antique yeah. and furniture really dressers. Cool. Like, imagine. I don't know. Do they give tours to just anybody? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. They have wine everywhere. Everywhere. There's I mean, there's wine hanging from the ceiling, there's wine in dresser drawers, there's wine in cases, there's wine. There's right. wine everywhere. So I don't feel bad about wine sitting in our restaurant no. after these <laughs> in, in, in restaurants in Italy. Remember the place we went in La Mora in Barolo? Oh, yeah, you could, yeah. The wine, the restaurant had boxes. Boxes and boxes. Like, you order, you order the wine, yep. and the waiter literally walks 10 feet, feet away and stack of boxes and pulls out your bottle and brings it to how the about, table. How about the winery that we went to when we were in Tuscany? Um, uh, um, La Mandania. They brought us to that restaurant, and there were wines everywhere when you first walked in. Yeah. Like, the front room was all boxes of wines, mm -hmm. right? And they, they use them, they sell them. It's pretty incredible. So um, I, I yeah. love it. I love that. I love that we're becoming that feel of what we see, you know, all right. around Italy. So, what, so when you walk into a Roman time and you see all the wine, yeah. <laughs> that's normal in, in some Italian restaurants. Yeah. That they have so much wine that they just store it wherever they can. 
every nook and cranny and in the dining room stacked in boxes. But that place in Lamora was like, I'm looking at, I'm looking at all this stuff. Like the delivery guy walks in, drops off the cases and they stay right there. They stay right there. And they just pull wine out of those boxes. Yeah. It was really, really cool. Really cool. Um, so yeah. Right. Um, so Tenuta Santa Maria, uh, one of our favorite vineyards from Verona area. Uh, this is something in Negrar, Verona. And, um, what, no, what other wine that we're getting in, I ordered, I don't know if you know, but I ordered some Bartolino, La Frage. You did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a really cool experiment to do. If you like Valpolicellas and Amorones, just to the west of that region, is a region called Bartolino. Bartolino. And it's Corvina grape? Uh, Bartolino, no? they, they used other grapes. They used a, they used a bunch of different... Gar Garganega is the white... Garganega is the, the white, white right, grape there. La yeah. Uh, la, la, la Frage. Frage. So Bartolino is right off of Lake Garda, Lake Garda being the largest lake in Italy. As soon as on the east side of Lake Garda, it's all flat. It's all flat. And then you hit the mountains and they go up, which is Valpolicella. This is Negrar, Valpolicella, Valpolicella, Verona area. Um, but the flat part is um, Bartolino. So because of the lake effect heat, the, because of the lake effect heat, you get a very, very tropical climate in Bartolino, much more different than you would get in, um, in, uh, in Valpolicella. So you can grow, grow all kinds of citrus there. La Frage, the one vineyard, had a kiwi orchard in there for the longest time. They had to get rid of the kiwi orchard because it was causing too many pests and they grow organically and they just couldn't, it was hard to manage and they made a judgment and said, let's just get rid of the kiwis. Really cool winery too. So, but the Bartolino wines are totally different than the Valpolicellas and they're neighboring. One's flat, on the water, on um, a lot of, lot, lot, the, the, yeah. the, the, it's just like the Finger Lakes. Okay. It's exactly like the Finger Lakes. Mm -hmm. It has that microclimate. Mm -hmm. So they grow all kinds of tropical fruits okay. in northern Italy on the east side of Lake Garda because the way the wind comes across, pulls the heat off of the lake and drops it off right on the so land there. Complete, the wines are just completely, completely different. different from Bartolino versus, and I got a Bartolino in. It's coming in. I ordered a La Frage wine. Um, and it's a great value, the awesome. Bartolino that's coming in. So that's going to be exciting. They were out of stock. It's actually getting going through customs right now. It'll be here, cool. I think, Friday. Um, I ordered it two, a week or so ago. Awesome. All right. Um, that's, that's about it. it. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow we'll get to do another um, a, a Wine Time Live. So stay tuned for that. And that's it. Go to VIPWineryVacations.com. You'll see information about all of the trips that we do to Italy. We just updated the website. We're super excited. I got a lot more work to do to it. But it's a completely overhaul of the site that we previously had. I'm very proud of it. A lot of great candid shots there of a lot of our guests having fun. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. And if you want to have fun with us and with them, uh, click the button to email us, call us, and uh, we'd be happy to uh, talk to you about. And share our stories, and hopefully you can join us on one of our trips. Right. Have an amazing day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.